Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Flying Cat Marketing video series. I'm Maiva C. Puentes, and this is Buddy the Flying Cat. And we are very happy today to introduce, to talk to Zina Blayachi, who is a marketer and co-founder of Pitch Slap. And we'll talk a little bit more about what Pitch Slap is in the interview. And today we're going to be talking about strategic narratives, how to figure out what your brand messaging is, how to talk to your audience in a way that actually resonates them, and how to figure all of that out. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed it. If you do, please give it a like, share, drop a comment below, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. So I'll just dive right in there and enjoy. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Flying Cat Marketing interview series. Today, I have a special guest, Zina Blayachi. Uh, who is also based here in Barcelona, same as me. We've interacted a few times uh, for over LinkedIn, and I, I participated in her Pitch Slap program, which helps entrepreneurs perfect their pitches and get uh, you know, mm -hmm. low stakes, but high value advice on how to improve mm -hmm. your exactly. business. She's the CMO in residence at Addington Technologies, marketing strategy consultant, and I am just very happy to have you here today. My, my pleasure, uh, my pleasure. And thank you so much for having me. Um, I think this was uh, long overdue, no? Absolutely, yeah, we've been chatting for a while and I'm like, oh, I really have to get her on, on my interview series. So I'm really excited to talk to you today. Um, so uh, I know that one of your passions is strategic narratives as a, as a marketing mm -hmm. strategist. So, why don't you tell me a little bit about what that means? Sure, my pleasure. So um, basically, it's it's one of well, it's one of the first things that I do with my clients, um, even though they have um, their their pitch, uh, whether it be it sales pitch or investor pitch, uh, ready is to take a step back and um, reevaluate and see, make sure that uh, your value proposition is is really bringing out. Um, the best, the best of your business. Okay, so are we shining the light on 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 your full value? No, so that's the part of the step back. Um, who who's your target? So on a bigger, the strategic narrative is is on a on a bigger level. After that, from from the strategic narrative can stem um, the sales pitch or the investor pitch or etc. So that's that's the bigger narrative of you know. Uh, flying cat uh, marketing what's the bigger narrative and then for each type of audience or type of talk target you can have a different sales pitch adapted to that but it's, it's just on a higher higher level hmm. okay but what is the difference between a strategic narrative and a value proposition so the strategic narrative just starts uh, starts obviously it has the, the the value proposition. It's it's the core in everything everything that you do, but it englobes the the why you're doing everything. The it's the main story that a, a CEO would tell, for example. That's okay. the whole story of the whole the, the vision, the why we're doing this. Um, I like um, a, a big um, a big one on on strategic narratives is Andy Raskin. No? And he talks about the new game, old game. It's just a new way of, of, of defining um, the new pitch, basically. The, the new game, old game. So the, this is the old game. Um, this is why we're doing things differently, no? because there has been a shift in the industry. And this is the new game. And these are the winners at this new game. No? So you define that overall in a, in a bigger sense. And then you let that trickle down on the different um, uh, sales pitches or whatever marketing um, uh, material that you, that you might have, marketing content, et cetera. Hmm. So you define this with the CEO and then what is the next step? So it goes into the branding or you have to train the salespeople on it? They have to. They have to own it. That's that's for sure. The the CEO has to own it, and you know that, right? So whatever, even in your work, you know whatever strategy you can um, help define or build. If it's not owned by the, you know, everyone, um, then it doesn't go anywhere. So definitely owning it, believing in, it, believing in it, and then adapting that to. So if it's sales and they're doing sales pitches, then taking that as a starting point to to build the sales pitches 
thinking of that particular target. If it's marketing, um, for example, uh, your your content, no, your yeah. content. So how 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 does that apply? No, how does that inspire um, or at least be coherent in everything that you do? Hmm. Yeah, that's um, that's something that I find lacks in a, or there's a there's a lot of jumping from okay who's our audience what is our branding and what is even our product I was just in a in a startup accelerator I was telling you for the last two days mm -hmm. and um, one of the greatest challenges that I noticed is that people weren't really sure who their audience was or what their actual pain points were and they're saying okay so we're just gonna um, we're guessing that this is that this is what's useful to them Mm -hmm. uh, we think this is what's useful to them. I said, okay, well, what have they told you? Well, we haven't talked to them yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's, a, that's a big one that I, 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 I fight I fight with them uh, about this because it's, and it's also part of, uh, not to bring up pitch slap, but it's also one of the reasons uh, behind uh, pitch slap because you're, you're behind your desk and it's, 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 you know, pitches sound great. Targets sound, you know, spot on. Um, my interest based audience in Facebook ads sounds, you know, like it's, it's, it's going to be the money generating uh, campaign. No, but once you, get out of get out of your head and step outside and start talking to people then you know you're no longer it's no longer guesswork no yeah. you're actually making decisions based on conversations that you've had and and it's just that if you do have uh, traction then you've got maybe surveys um, that you can access you've got sales calls then you can access just simple emails that you can access so all that that tells you a lot, no? Mm -hmm. um, if not, you have, you know, you can always read reviews um, uh, on, on company, you know, on, on review sites uh, about similar products or the competition or alternative products. Uh, G2, you know, the reviews on G2. So all this, all this, um, in addition to talking to your customer, of course, and your uh, potential customer, it's just, I mean, it's key. <laughs> Absolutely. <Right? laughs> That's a great hack, looking at review sites mm. and seeing what they say about similar products. Mm. What would be your tactic if your product is disruptive, if it doesn't really exist yet? And if you don't, if you know it has some sort of value, but you haven't quite figured out for whom. Quite figured out for whom. So the first thing I would, I would, um, I would do, which is something that I do with ones that um, are not that disruptive, but... In, in the sense, it's hard to explain their value, you know? So it's, there's always, uh, when I start working with a client, it's, I, I'm not a magician, you know? I have to do the work. So I have a process that I go through and I do the work. So it's not that I could just jump in and say, that's it, you know, this is what you do and boom. No, I just, you know, I, I read a lot and I have to look at all sorts of sources of information. But um, um, I would definitely start bouncing it off uh, people in my network, seeing how they how they react. Uh, LinkedIn posts is a really nice way to, to validate stuff. So I do that once in a while where I'll, I'll validate maybe headlines. Uh, those are specific ways to describe um, uh, projects that I'm on and see how people react to it. Does that, you know, does that uh, get more engagement or not? Um, so just start talking to people, definitely. Yeah. And and pitching, you know, even uh, I uh, this morning I had um, I was having a conversation with a with a LinkedIn contact, and we were saying that networking events are great, and and I always use them to test my pitch. So I'll just present myself as you know I'll have one pitch, and then but the next networking in networking event I'll present myself as something else and see which one gets more you know either generates more interest or no. So this this whole testing. Um, sending emails, for example, sending uh, messages, mass messages to my to my uh, marketing network, um, asking them for help on what do you think, this one or this one? Does this talk to you or does that talk? You know, like uh, really just just talking to all sorts of different people. And then the same thing is uh, maybe I'm getting into too much detail and stop me, Anne, because I get really excited about this stuff. I'm also excited <laughs> about that stuff too. <laughs> um, when you when you're when you're um, uh, 
So it, it, you've got a you've got a product uh, and you have a features list, right? Uh, in your in your roadmap, um, how do you decide which feature you're going to work on? Okay, because your your customers are asking for so many things, right? How do you prioritize? You know, so you have to look at who's really a, a, a user. You know, because you you can't listen to someone who's not going to use mm -hmm. and not going to pay your. You know, and it's the same thing. You just listen, 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 and then you figure out. Okay, so is which feedback am I am I going to listen to? No. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it's, it's not only who's going to be your paying user, but who's going to be your best paying user. Like which users right. are lasting the longest, which ones mm -hmm. are the least amount of headache, uh, mm -hmm. which ones are that's a good one. The that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, because that's that goes into lifetime value margin. Uh, no. Yeah. What does it really cost me to maintain this uh, this user? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So what does your process look like? Let's say you're taking on a new client. Do you have, obviously there's going to be different Definitely. things that you're doing for different clients, but do you have some kind of skeleton procedure for defining their, their audience? Um, well, it, it definitely is something that I do with them. I like them to be in the process, uh, part of the process, yeah. but there definitely is a, there's a groundwork, uh, an, an immersion period that I have to go through on my own. And, and that is just something that just comes naturally. It's a, I've, I've tried to, to put it down in a process because I'm very organized and I love, you know, processes and, and stuff. But this, I want to just leave it, you know, just yeah. leave it just, uh, uh, just to come out naturally, you know. Um, but yeah, that immersion period for me is really important. So I, I try to understand which are the alternatives to this business. So one thing is, for example, let's say you're you're. Um, I just signed you on as a client. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Yes, right. You're super happy. I'm excited, right? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you to pass on knowledge, okay, to me because I need to know at least um, you know as much as you do, okay. So you just knowledge pass uh, you pass on the the knowledge. So I'll go through all that. Uh, and all that, I mean, it's the the, the basics from a, from a, an investor pitch or a sales pitch. You already know uh, pretty much where where the company is at and what what the company needs. No, so then I I look at all the alternatives to this product or service. So alternatives, not competitors. Okay, alternatives. Then I look at all the the the, the main competitors, and I just start reading. I just start reading uh, landing pages, reviews, uh, social media. Um, maybe if they use specific hashtags, um, what what do they use in their in their uh, meta description? Uh, what keywords do they use? And then I look at those keywords. What kind of results does Google generate with those? And just trying to get um, a sense of what the language is like. You know what people are are talking about and what one thing means and what the other, no? So just really just that immersion, who's who, no? And then in that process, obviously through, so just to, to give you a few ideas of tools. So I use a uh, social media for sure. Um, uh, LinkedIn, uh, definitely. Um, a little bit of Instagram too and Facebook. Yeah, sure, uh, that, that I do too. Uh, Google is a, a, a huge resource um, for me. And you I think these, re these resources are, right now you're looking up the competitors and the alternatives. Yeah, I'm just and doing so research. So you're going on, on their social media accounts to see what, mm -hmm. what their yeah. messaging is. Okay, yeah. go yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I, I go through that and, uh, you know, it's. I, you have to be quick because you can spend six hours on that, but you have to learn how to skim you know, take in the most important and skim. And then during that pro that immersion process, start connecting stuff, you know? So I'll just jot down notes and be like, okay, so this one was, no, I saw this there, etc. So connecting uh, stuff and grouping ideas, like in a brainstorming session, no? Mm -hmm. um, pretty simple. Uh, Quora, I've used Quora uh, many, many a times. That's, that's really good. I've had to use Reddit a few times on, on some specific cases. Um, LinkedIn, definitely a big one for me. Um, 
yeah, those are just to, to name a few. Uh, Facebook, of course, if, if, if that company has uh, ads, then I'll look at and see uh, the, the ads, the running ads that they have, uh, running ads on LinkedIn. Um, so, what yeah. exactly are you looking for? Just to you... see what they, what they, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, that's the one, so like what, oh, okay. because if you're skimming, your eye is trained to catch specific things and what hmm. are those things? Yeah, well, so, and some things I spend more time than than others. But um, I'm trying to look at the language that they use. So definitely that, because you know when you have a target audience, if you're not talking in their language, and mm-hmm. some have specific uh, languages no? yeah. that you need to talk uh, to, uh, uh, talk in. Um, you know, if you don't know what SEO is, then mm, you know if you're trying to explain SEO in a different way without using SEO, then you're like, who's this weirdo? You know, Where, did you just start learning marketing, right? <laughs> no. So you need to learn the the language. I'm trying to see who they're who they're talking to. So that's a uh, that's that's another one. And what it is that they um, that they uh, shine uh, light on. You know, what's um, don't, you know, don't waste time and stop wasting time, blah, 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 blah. Is that, is that their main selling points? Yeah. What, what are the selling points? Yeah. So I'm trying to get all that, um, mixed with, um, I always, always do that. And, and I think it's a, a, you know, I've, I've been told that I was a, a control freak by a freak, few collaborators, but in a nice way, because whenever I sign on a new client, I, I do my own, uh, my a little bit of customer development you know on my own because i believe sure I, you know i believe what you're saying but i need to see it and hear it for myself but when, when you, you say that it, you mean after the client tells you who their customer is you say okay nice yeah. but i'm gonna go talk to them myself i talk to them myself i find a few um maybe on linkedin reach out to them jump on a call um, see, you know, see in my network, is there someone that fits that profile? And then I go validate that on my own and, and make my own opinions, you know? And I think that's, uh, that's really enriching. Not because I hold, you know, the, the truth uh, here, but it's just my point of view, my objective external point of view is, uh, you know, it just adds uh, uh, another perspective and that it adds value, no? Just to double check, you know? Yeah. I, I need, I need to, to double check, yeah. Um, yeah, so sorry about that. I just went off on, no, it's good. <laughs> you can I'm stop me. Yeah. <laughs> also in this, in this persona development, part of my process as well is to either survey or talk to customers directly. Um, I encourage the customer to do it, or at least I, I record hmm. the calls that I have with customers. And then after I encourage them to listen to it, because there's always so awesome. much insight that hmm. comes out of it. But what I do find challenging is uh, actually getting on the, some of my custom clients have very high level, super busy clients, um, some C levels, and it's very challenging to get them on the phone hmm. uh, or to get them talking. Or if I do have some of my network, maybe they don't have the same problems as the target of my, of mm-hmm. my client. Um, and in this case, it's taken me like a month, a month it wants to, to create a, buyer persona because it took me so long to get on the phone with some of these customers of theirs. Do you ever face that? And what if you can't actually talk to this kind of persona? What, what do you do? I've I've been there. I've been there once. Um, And and to be honest, it's, I I think it's never going to happen to me again because I learned that lesson. No, but the first time I just took it as a, you know, as a barrier and I, I was, I just wasn't used to it. So I, you know, just, I just paused for, for a few days, you know, so it just stalled because I didn't, I didn't know, you know, my process was all, um, you know, I was all shook up, you know, by this whole, I was like, what do you mean? I can't talk to them. <laughs> you know, um, It's as easy as, but yeah, definitely. Um, in the case of B2B, uh, you've got a certain, um, uh, companies and I'm sure that y- your case was a B2B, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there are certain certain companies when they're big enough and their targets are big businesses. Uh, you know, and I'm talking Telefonica, I'm talking Vodafone, I'm talking BBVA, big. You know, 
um, that gets a bit more complicated unless your own personal brand and your network um, yeah. has those people in there, you know. And there, I've I've been, you know, really thankful to to have to have these these types of uh, people in my network, from you know being part of uh, Waira's incubator. Um, you know, I don't know if it's about it so long ago, like five five years ago or something. So, um, and all and the rest of the the network that I've been uh, building. Um, but if you don't have those, it, it's just a cold cold call or a cold message. No, you need a, an intro. You need something warm. Uh, yeah. Hmm. definitely yeah that's a tough one hmm. it is yeah. it, it is a challenge and sometimes I'm thinking yeah you can actually go <clears throat> instead of talking to their direct customers like you said you can do a, hmm. a like somebody who's in the same position hmm. and so, sometimes I find that the customer person the buyer persona the person who makes the decision about whether to purchase this product or not is not the same person who influences the decision or there is not the same person who's gonna end up using it or who's ending up benefiting from the product. And in this, um, what do you do in that kind of case? How do you define the persona and how do, it, how do you communicate with the person when it's kind of two different people with two different goals, but one is gonna use the product and it's actually gonna benefit mm -hmm. one person but they got to get the yes from a different person who doesn't see the value in it as much. Yeah. Um, one of the projects I'm on right now is um, has exactly this challenge, which is, and it's just not one user. It's actually two groups of users within the same company. So there's a decision maker and then you've got the, the, the users and, and um, this it's a, it's, it's a tool that, brings benefits to marketing and sales. Okay, but the, the message is different to marketing than you know the, the message you're gonna you're gonna send uh, marketing is different than the one uh, you send sales, right? So that's there's one uh, one challenge there. You know? um, then you have the decision maker depending on, on the structure of the company, it could be um, the, the the CEO directly, you no? Know? Um, if not, it could be the, the CFO, um, depends on the structure of the company, right? So here, what I try to always do is first go to the ones that actually have the problem. Yeah. Ultimately, if, if it's something that's going to reduce costs or increase revenue, the whole company uh, should care about that. Yeah. So I think you agree, no? It's, yeah. it's, uh, even if your CFO heard, if your CFO hears about something that's going to reduce costs, then they're going to jump on it, no? <laughs> right? Um, so ultimately, I think it should resonate with everyone. But um, if, in, in my case, uh, in this specific example, um, I have a different way of, um, you know, pitching it to someone that's from marketing than someone that's from from sales. For example, marketing, it could be just one of the fun things. It could be, you know, um, sales is going to fist, fist bump you, you know, um, and they're going to love you. They're going to high five you, you know, by the, in the cafeteria after this, you know, because of the, the wonderful leads that you're, you're yeah. giving them, you know, because they're tired of wasting their time with shitty, shitty leads. Excuse my French. Eh? May want to <laughs> <laughs> you know, so stuff like that. And then sales, it's a different pitch. Right. Yeah. Um, so. So, yeah, it's it's a how, how do I handle it? It's true. I didn't answer your your original uh, question is talking to it, trying doing my best to talk, talk to all three or all, you know, to both mm -hmm. uh, the dec decision maker and um, the, the user. Uh, definitely. And have material that, for example, in, in one another project, it's um, there's in a proposal there's something for every department okay so this is for your cfo this is for your cmo this is for your head of sales right and there are benefits for each so it explains not only does it explain that you know you can get started in in no time which is great for your developers right so yeah. and then there's you know what are the benefits for your marketing team 
Um, what are the benefits for your CF, uh, CFO? So we're making it easy for those users to pitch it internally. Okay. Mm. But if you tools, do, actually, you're giving them literally. You're you're not giving them um, uh, time to think, or they don't need to think. It's just making it easy. Just just push. All you have to do is forward this or forward this video. In this video, we explain no. Um, so it's just I think it's about knowing them all if you can yeah. if you can access them and then seeing how you can enable that that uh, that buy you know we talk about sales enablement but I think there's a enabling the the buying you know <laughs> process yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that's brilliant to provide them so you're not only addressing objections of the person that you are really targeting but you're addressing even if you've convinced them sometimes it's not enough and you're also pre object. Uh, addressing the objections of the person that they want to convince. Yes. Yes. So that is that mm -hmm. is definitely brilliant. And how does this tie in with the strategic narrative? <laughs> how does this tie in? So the strategic narrative is there to, to, to guide you in, in, in everything. So if, if um, just, just imagine, uh, marketing works on content, right? So they're usually in silo. Right. Yeah. Um, so marketing works on content that they think uh, sales is going to, you know, is going to love or it's going to help sales. OK, so we know the story. Right. Sales works on these pitches and they probably don't even use the the right logos and the right formats <laughs> and the right. You no, know, all, all this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and and they're, you know, one is is bringing out one selling point. The other one is bringing out another selling point. So all this information is very siloed. There's no alignment. And, and the CEO ultimately is just demanding results. Mm -hmm. Right. So if the CEO from the from the very top just establishes this line, this 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 narrative, this general narrative that we can um, uh, build up on. For everyone, no? yeah. And I think it ultimately what I love most about this work um, is that it it helps marketing and sales uh, just talk, you know, speak the same language, yeah. right? Uh, and um, and I, I'm a, I'm a big uh, I'm a big fan of uh, revenue revenue marketing, right? So just the uh, marketing being more intentional and being more. Um, uh, how to say co-own revenue with sales. So it's not marketing. It just does the awareness stuff and sales does the, you know, and it really, the having a strategic narrative that's, uh, you know, um, from pushed down from the top, right? So that some, they all believe in it really helps uh, align uh, all departments actually. Hmm. So how do you balance revenue driven marketing with some things that's hard to kind of attribute to revenue but in the end it's still important for your narrative for your branding to build this trust that ultimately who knows when and who knows in what way but ultimately it will drive revenue but it's hard to measure what percentage of that kind of marketing and that kind of communication would you recommend doing versus marketing that's focused only on the bottom of the funnel and, and driving more MQLs? Um, well, that's the thing. You don't stop doing awareness. So you need, uh, you don't, I mean, there isn't a source of, you know, um, sales qualified leads uh, that you could just go tap into, you know, you have yes. to, you know, that would be, that would be awesome, but you have to, you know, um, a step take a step back and um just i think in general um looking at your your targeting so that's where intent i think it's one of the things that we we had discussed intent so being more um so focused on on uh, looking for audiences that have intent mm -hmm. so if you think of um, you know, we sometimes do uh, interest-based, uh, you know, campaigns on, on Facebook that don't necessarily have intent. Well, not necessarily, they don't, right? So yeah. that's, the intent comes later on. So did they watch 50% of the video, then you do a remarketing, and what did they do on my landing page, etc. So this part of the intent, I think, is very important because it shows that we as marketers are being more intentional with our marketing because at the end of the day marketing is there 
um, to, to, to drive sales, yeah. right? Yeah. At the end of the day, the CEO wants sales. So there's no, you know, there's no, hey, we got, you know, 10,000 likes on our uh, LinkedIn post. No that sales. doesn't, <laughs> no sales though, right? Yeah. Um, if that if that helps at some point because you have a strategy and that, you know, that's um, like an example. Uh, you sell, um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm doing a, a course on uh, predictive uh, marketing, right? So if I put it out on LinkedIn, and um, people can sign up, you know, for, they can sign up for free, yeah. right? So those are, those are all leads that I get, yeah? But are they all qualified? Because we all like free, free yeah. courses, right? Yeah. So how qualified are they? You know, so just taking a step back and I think thinking about, um, about this stuff, yeah. And, um, but, but it's important to put out content. Like I'm not saying that, that yeah. you should not put out content. You just need to be aware of where you're putting that content out, um, yeah. you know? And also the, the content that you're creating, I feel should be specific enough that it is to an extent qualifying the people that are signing up for it. It should repel people that wouldn't be, yeah. um, feel like they should look at this course and be like, hmm. oh, no, that's not, yeah. that's not interesting for me because that's for somebody mm. else. And who is it for? It's mm. for a qualified lead. Did you Linda, that? Linda would love that, you know, but they would say, yes, but my friend Linda would love that. I'm gonna, let, yeah. me, let me forward that to her, right? Yeah. So that's, yeah. Exactly. Did you say that you're giving, it's your course or you're taking the course on predictive marketing? No, no, giving the course, it's a course of, um, in Addington where, oh. yeah, it's a, a course that's, you know, that's a, he already worked on, on, on the course launched in Spanish and we're doing, uh, uh, we're revisiting the, the whole curriculum um, and doing it in English. Yeah. Oh, adapting it, so. mm. when is it going to be released? No pressure on me. But <laughs> no, no. Hopefully, hopefully I'll let you know, but hopefully in the next, uh, in the next month. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I think that by the time this uh, interview is released, your course will probably be launched. So it'll be perfect oh. timing. So Okay, it's fantastic. Check out, check out the course. <laughs> That's <Cool>. awesome. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much for this super insightful conversation. I've learned a lot today. And um, where is the best place for people to connect? With, I mean, I know you're actually super active on LinkedIn. So if anybody mm -hmm. wants to connect with, with Z, yeah. do it on LinkedIn. But is there anywhere else that people can find you? I, you know, I'm, I've been focusing on one, uh, one platform uh, for now. So the, yeah, feel free to, to connect on, on LinkedIn. Just shoot me a message. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. And um, if you guys are working on your pitches or want your value proposition right. reviewed, mm -hmm. you have to join Pitch Slap. Mm -hmm. I did it. I got my, my ass kicked. <laughs> Excuse my French. <laughs> got Pitch Slapped. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got I got pitch slapped um, and it's super valuable because it's really low stakes. It's kind of like, um, what is that? What is that? Um, oh man, I used to do this public speaking thing. Toastmasters. It's like Toastmasters, sort of, where you go up and pretend to public speak and then it's really low stakes. Everybody's there, has the same goal. Nobody's uh -huh. talking to you. They're all just trying to improve their pitches. And then you have experts like Zineb and, and Taryn to help you. Out, so. Well, I just want to make it clear that I didn't pay you to do this. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I think actually. <laughs> yeah, so. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. It's been yeah. a pleasure to have you on. And Thank uh, you. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah, Mayba. Thank you so much. Mm. And uh, thank you everybody for listening or watching. Yeah. And yes. Thank you, you so you. Mm. Goodbye. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Flying Cat Marketing Series. If you enjoy this interview, please give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues, and subscribe to this channel. Stay tuned because next week I'll be interviewing another leader in the SaaS and startup world talking about their challenges and achievements. See you there.